Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you glory and, and honor and praise and worship for who you are and what you've done for us through our Lord and Savior, your only begotten Son, Christ Jesus. Uh, we want to thank you so much for the entire week that you've uh, graciously enabled us to go through. Father, as we gather together as a class this evening, we pray that your spirit will move and, and teach us. Father, we ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and we'll receive it in the name of Jesus. May you use our teacher as he uh, teaches us this evening, and may you open our minds to, and our hearts to take and commit to heart and to memory whatever we are going to study so that we can be hoped as we we. we we put in practice the God's laws for businesses. Father, we bless you. We honor you. Come and take over. Come and take control, Spirit of God. And as our other members are coming on, joining on the class, we pray that you may hasten them to come and join us. We love you. We honor you. Spirit of God, may you take control of every bit of the session. In Jesus' holy and mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 You are yeah. Gary, before you start, Daniel had asked that those who can be on camera, please be on camera, uh, that you be on video. So if you can let your, yourself be seen, I think he has asked that we do that. So if, it is, if you can do, if you can't, it's okay. I'll settle down in a minute and I think switch on my video. Okay, go ahead, Gary. Okay. Well, once again, my name's Gary Shotton, and it's an extreme honor, a great honor that I could be in front of such a large host of key influential people in your own worlds. And we just remind ourselves a little bit of the previous lessons and the purpose for meeting. Uh, first of all, um, it's inspiring better business, but we're not pushing inspiring better bu business. We believe our organization is to help other organizations be better funded, be better funded internally. And so we're here as kind of a add-on helping organizations, not really building an empire of our own people, if you want to think of it that way. And in review, uh, we're here to empower individuals to be financially stable through biblically-based business principles. We're not here to seek money, get rich, be the wealthiest guy in the town, have the biggest house. That's, that's so far from our thought pattern, it's just ridiculous. But some people... When you think of business, they think every business person is kind of greedy and trying to get rich. No, we're talking about God's way. We're talking about the way God wants us to handle things. We're talking about the way God intended us to be blessed. We believe, and I believe, that God is a God of blessing. God's a God of provision. And one of the first lessons we taught in the chapter one is start where you're at with what you have. Now, we're not going to talk much about it, but remember, this is not start big with a loan. This is not grab a bunch of money and wait till you get a bunch of money. We're saying maybe dedicate four or five hours a week, not a day, four or five hours a week, maybe Saturday morning for six or four or five hours or a little bit each day and keep your regular income coming. Somehow you're living now. Somehow you're existing. And so keep that coming, and it's like planting a seed. It is. That's one of the best examples of business is a seed that's being planted. It's so small. It looks insignificant. You could have eaten that seed, or you could have planted it. So plant a little seed of time, and then watch that grow. Develop it, grow, develop it, grow. And at, believe with God's help, and your hard work and the the gaining experience of your own past and others, including myself and our ministry, then you're going to see this side income outgrow your other income. 
and you're going to easily replace your other. Now, I won't say easily, but there will be a time and point where it's nothing about this is over, overly easy. But if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So at some point, you can transition into your own Maybe your other part-time business is diminishing and because you're actually funding your household strong. We're very, very pro-family. We're very, very pro-God, first of all, then pro-family, and then business. That's the priority. Well, that's my intro. I'm going to stick with it. That's who we are. We're going to not drift off of that. And today, we're talking about the law of systems. And if there's one law that I really, really enjoy teaching, and I have a lots of experience, it's the law of systems. So I've always been excited about teaching this, and I'm excited today. Let me ask, is everyone hearing me okay? Is this okay, Judith? Yes, everybody it okay? is. Okay, good. And uh, so uh, I just want you to know that God is a God of systems. We're going to go through this whole process, and we're going to talk first of all about what you see there. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Man, I didn't really want to hear that. <laughs> well, the hold it. That's the truth. If we're not going to create some kind of a plan, some kind of a future, sometime in our whole introduction is change the way we think. And if we're willing to change the way we think, and we're willing to, to take on God's way of doing things, then God's going to join in with our 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 um, our efforts. And so we're going to be here talking today about things like this opening discussions, which we're doing. I'm going to tell a little bit about my personal history in there. It won't take long. We're going to talk about God's design for this world in systems, and then systems in your business. Uh, that you know, Unless you learn a lesson, you can go to seminars, you can read books, you can, you can enroll for certification of all kinds of stuff. But unless you implement it, unless you try it, I'd rather to go to a conference and come home with two or maybe just one new thing that I implement than come with a whole book through it full of stuff that never gets implemented. So how do I develop my own system in my own business? And then this, this systems are designed for fixing and adjusting your own existing business. And it's a never-ending thing. Every law that we're talking, God's laws, have no end to them. They're always unfolding, always deepening, always getting more knowledge base. But unless we start with the basics, unless we get the basics, it would be like asking a child that's maybe uh, in the first grade to enroll in the fifth grade of school. That's not fair. You can't expect a a first grader to comprehend the fifth grade and on on through life. And remember, God is not looking for you to give money to him and to the church and everything as a way of gaining favor with God. I think some people think, man, if I'm doing this now, God owes me something. No, he doesn't owe you anything. He, he's already given you everything, and all he's watching for in my opinion, and it's very documented, is can I trust this person? Can you be trusted with money? Can you be trusted to follow God's plan with the money that you are in it, you're, 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 uh, uh, blessed with. That's why he starts, I'm not going to teach on it, but that's why he starts with a tithe. I mean, how, how, no, how can he trust somebody that isn't even willing to trust him just a little bit? So a little bit of intro still. Okay, and then we want to leave time. We're definitely today for questions. I hope you're taking notes. I hope you ask hard questions, difficult questions. I love difficult questions. It puts me on the spot. And then last but not least, you must take action. You must be willing to take some steps. This is all head knowledge. Really won't do much for you if you're not willing to take actions. Well, Let's get started. What is a system? When have you seen a business successfully implementing a good system? Think about it. I can think of one particular business in my area. It happens to be called Chick-fil-A. 
a Christian man, Truett Cathy, who's passed on, they they have quick purchase of chicken. I'm telling you, that one business has systems, 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 and they're always, always improving the systems. And if you are honest, you can go into any business and you can just look with a different kind of like a different set of glasses and say, of the laws of God's laws for business, and remember, these are not Gary's laws. These are not American laws. These are God's laws. You can start spotting and understanding the law of quality, the law of, of customer development. How do they treat me as a customer? But you certainly can start spotting the laws of systems. And so think about it. Have you been at a place where this is horrible? I have to wait in this line for this long for such a simple thing as what I have to have? That's a poor system. And you're if in business and in life, you're going to scare away um, customers fast. And they're going to know that you do not know what you're doing unless you are able to produce what we would call a business full of systems. And I will tell you, governments need to have systems. I will tell you, churches need to have systems. I will tell you that families need to have systems. And businesses certainly need to have systems. And so if you're into this just for a little bitty thing, this is a big topic, and I love it. So let's talk about it. God created, remember, we pull God into everything. This is review. You already should grasp this without any problem. We have the large scale systems. We have the scale of the, the systems of the sun, moon, star. That's the solar system. And it's interesting that you can trace back to my knowledge a few times in the Word of God, the Bible says that God calls the sun to stand still. And they tell me when they're launching a rocket that they have to make some kind of a little adjustment in the system because of that one fact. Everything else, you can predict where the sun's going to be. Everything, systems, systems. The ecosystem, I happen to enjoy, you might know, a little bit of a farm background, a little bit of a garden effect. And so I, I the ecosystem that, that we tend to mess up but we, God keeps healing, is that we plant seeds, we grow seeds, we harvest seeds, we, we replant again, we have rain, you know all that. It's God's way, and it's convincing. It's convincing that God has systems. Good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. Okay, prosperity is not a bad word. It's just that if it's misused, we are called to prosper. God wants us to prosper his way, good planning and hard work, but in but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. So we're into creating systems. Now, in another scope here, we have small scale systems. This will be an easy review. Our bodies are made up with systems. I have a nervous system. I have a respiratory system. I have a circulatory system. We have productive systems. We have digestive systems. I mean, just go on and on and on and on. And, and the systems never go away. They're same for everybody. We have very unimportant things that we always focus on, color of skin, I'm too tall, I'm too short, whatever. Those don't make any difference. The systems that are inside of us are the same. And these systems, when you go to the doctor, guess what they're doing? They're thinking, they don't may say this, what system's not working here? Let's see if it's the heart. Let's see if it's the nervous. That's how they find problems. And it never finishes. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh-oh, I'm sorry I didn't advance that slide very good. So now let's talk about systems around us. This is all introduction, all fairly quick. A country with poor systems is often poor. Now, we're not here to criticize. We're not here to elevate uh, America, no way. We're looking at systems. And then it's so obvious, though. It's so obvious that 
a country that makes it difficult for business, the systems for business to operate are actually a deterrent, are, 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 are resisting growth in systems. In Natasha. business. Natasha. They are, poor, Natasha. they are poor countries. And the countries that are elevating themselves and improving their systems, improving the way they do things, are inviting people to come and do business. I happen to be coming, all most nations now have some form of an election. I'll be honest. I try to look at the candidates, not necessarily for what they promise, because we all know that can or can't may or may not happen. I look to their history. What has that individual done in their history? And especially in the business history, because all of our governments are a element of business, the business of government. Are they able to do the same things of God's laws for business, or have they in the past done those things efficiently, and will they bring that to the position? It could be the local, what we call the mayor. It could be what we call the governor of a, of a state. It could be, and you have different names. I know that for different countries, but it could be for the prime minister or the, or the president, whatever name. And, and as the, as the country goes related to systems, then it opens up the door for improvements. And a country or business with great systems is often great. It's not the only thing, but remember, every every law is linked together in a way that the feed on each other. They 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 are they are interlocked, and we call the word a chain. It's like pulling a chain, the weakest link. But I will tell you, if the link of systems is weak, you're going to have a very weak business. I'm telling you, I say it this way. I said, you know, the key to making profit, by the way, from my, from the secular w way of looking at it, from the, you know, it, it, it's not a bad thing to say this, but profit is the scoreboard for most businesses. Now we have another motive than just profit, but you have to have profit in order to make money in order to give for the gospel. That's what we're after. We want to have every nation should be supporting their work 100%. And they're really at the point that they're reaching out to the neighboring country because they are prosperous. They're being blessed. That's what we're looking at. And so if, 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 uh, if we want profit, we have to be efficient. We can't waste money, time, energy. If we're going to be efficient, we have to have systems. That's just the way it works, folks. It's the way it works. And it works in all aspects. Everything you're doing, systems, system, systems. Well, systems in business. Are you, a, 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 examine the things that take place. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, are, are, here's how systems work in business in general. And then we're going to get more specific to you. And then we're going to have questions. Don't forget. Write down questions, ask questions, be ready. I want a lot of questions for the time we have, and we're going to leave time. Uh, so a systems uh, is a system is a repeatable process that gives a predictable result. Let me say it again. It's a repeatable process that gives a predictable results. A system will save time. It'll save money. If you can repeat efficiently, and the simpler the system, the more likely it will succeed. I'm going to stop here and talk a little bit about my personal history. I'm not going to go in depth. It's only about what's related to systems, but you'll, you're probably, if you've talked to me before, you might know that I moved some 1,500 kilometers to a new town called Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, to attend Bible school with my wife and three little bitty kids. And I came thinking I'd get a job because I had a profession. I was an engineer. I had 10 years experience, but God had a different plan. At first, I'm going, what happened? Because I was expecting a job, a good job, a decent job anyway, because I have rent, I have food, I have tuition, I have all the things everybody else has, and I've been trusting God, and I thought God said, come.
But, oh, but God had a better plan because he showed me everything we're talking about, or most everything we're talking about in God's laws for business. If he had given me a nice job, I would have probably rested on that job and in my own mind would have said, well, you know, God helped me a little bit, but it was really my job that got me here. No, I couldn't find a job. So we help move people. This is transporting in America, in my town, there's people move from one house to another house. And many people just get their neighbors and friends and they get borrow or buy, rent a truck and they move it themselves. But there's a per certain large percentage that are older, not so healthy, or just don't want to do it. They hire somebody to pick up the sofa, pick up the refrigerator, pick up the washer and dryer, pick up the beds, put it in a truck, take it to the new spot, unload it, set it up so they can start their life at a new home. Now, a new home could be across the street, it could be across town, it could be another city, another state, it could be in a different world, it could be moved to Rwanda. So I did all of that, and I started, though, with what I had, a borrowed trailer. Won't go into the details, but I will tell you, from day one, I've always been a little bit being an engineer, okay, just to be honest, by being an engineer, I've already thinking in this kind of block mindset. I'm not creative in the sense of uh, artistic or 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 creating, a, a, a writing a novel or 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 decorating a picture or, or decorating a cake. I'm I'm a little bit more uh, nuts and bolts, and so in that I was always from day one, was thinking systems. Now, keep in mind, this was 42 years ago. So guess what? I didn't have a phone with a computer on it. I didn't have a cell phone at all. If I wanted to make a call, I had to stop and put a quarter in the pay phone if I want to do that, or I had to wait till I got back to the house or borrow. Yeah, I had no phone other than the landline. And so... All this happened, though, in a way that from day one, I started thinking, okay, I got to get organized. I got to be organized. I can't have just little pieces of paper where I can't find them. Who called me? When did they call me? How do they call me? What were they interested in? Do I call them back? And so we created some, from day one, ultra simple systems. That's what I'm telling you. Again, part-time, three or four hours on, four or five hours on Saturday, four or five hours a week to get started. From day one, create systems. How do you take an order? How do you how do you record what they wanted? In my case, I needed to know certain things. I needed to know their name. So I wrote it down on a little piece of paper that I made photocopies of. We did have photocopies. And I was so cheap, I made the half page because I didn't want to spend for a whole page. And so I made half, so I only needed a half page. And I put, what did I need? I need their name, always in the same line. I needed what? Some way to get in touch with them. A phone number, I could call them back. I needed to know generally what they want to do. Do they want to move across town? So I needed to know what town they're moving to and what town they're moving to from and what town to. That's two more items. So I'm now up to four things. And then I need to know uh, uh, a little bit more about it. Are you just needing us to move a little bit of stuff? Or tell me about this, and we circle, three-bedroom house, four-bedroom house, apartment. That would tell us a little bit about what we're moving. I ask one more thing. It's all to do with systems, because I ask another question every time. I always didn't get the answer, but I said, would you mind telling me what prompted you to call me? Was it a friend that told us about? Was it a uh, was it a newspaper ad? Today you could say, was it Facebook? Was it social media? Was, you know, keep track. I wanted to know how my advertising was worked. That's all I wrote down. That's six little things. That's it. And then from that little page, it started growing to a bigger page, then a full page, then a legal size page, then both sides of that page. Because I had a system that I wanted to put every piece of information I could, simple, on one piece of paper. I wanted it simple. I had to have it simple. Then when I got it all developed there, I went to the printer and made a little pads. I can show you. I, can, I, I guess I could. I just was looking at it. Here, here, if you can see here, here's the pads. I kept a few of them. These are pads 
that I printed with that had printed after after a ways. It was down the line, and I'll show you. And, and then I made it in bunch because we had, and there on the back side was more on one page, but everything was on one page. Payroll, directions, buy, whatever I needed because I wanted a system. I needed a system to keep track of it. And we had one little note over there. We called all those. We started hundreds of these because not everybody moved. And so we called it active or pending, or we called them a dud. That means that we didn't, we weren't successful. But we never threw those papers away right away. Is that where we called a dud, meaning it was uh, we went through the effort and they said, no, we went with somebody else because occasionally they would call back and say, somebody else in my transport business, somebody else failed them. Could I come back? Oh, yeah, I have your paperwork right here. That one piece of paper, one piece of paper. I have your paperwork right here. Let's see what we can do. We'll try to work into a schedule that'll work well for you. That's how we kept it simple, but we had systems. Good systems consist, cons, uh, uh, good systems, co uh, consistent product or service and a customer that, that, that will trust you. That's what you, you're bringing trust when you bring systems. I will wait, will, will uh, suggest that if, the system of the sun coming up at the right time tomorrow morning, it doesn't come up as we expect. We're probably all going to be, uh-oh, what's happening now, right? That's how we trust a system. And the, the most processes that have more than one step can have a, a system uh, must have a system to implement. I won't, I won't talk a lot about it. My last business was 15 years of a manufacturing company. And we made metal parts by the thousands. We had hundreds of orders. We had hundreds of orders in process all at the same time. And we had to keep organized like crazy. I mean, so we had to document everything because if there was one thing wrong with one part in any of those shipments, we had to be able to identify all the other parts that were on that shipment so that we we could we could we could fix it and there was just everything to do with ma manufacturing everything to do with manufacturing is systems 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 for quality systems for payroll system systems systems everything was systems i hope i'm selling you on systems but it's the truth well a way to start is to examine the things that take the largest amount of your resources. What do I mean resources? Your time is a resource. Your money is a resource. Your energy is a resource. Uh, examples of this, you do, you do spend a lot of time, if you do spend a lot of time writing down customer information, that's what I did. I created a customer information sheet for myself for my workers, now the, I grew to the point that I had five salesmen. I had a sales manager. All five salesmen had to start with this page because we had a system. And if we thought that something was should be changed, then the next time we printed the pages, we changed that on that page. Now, so if I spend a lot of time getting information, I got to make it simple. I got to make it fast. I got to make it easy. And do you spend a lot of time explaining details to some about something? Well, there's where a, a, a manual or a, or, or a sales brochure, there's something that says, hey, here's what you can count on from us so that you are providing a product or service so that they're expecting something and they can count on what they purchased. There, this idea, it isn't the idea that we don't trust each other. The idea is, do we communicate accurately? I've for years sold people this funny little saying. I says, I know I will do what I said. If I can just remember it, I can't remember what I said. Write it down, a little paragraph. That's a bit of a system. Does your product involve multiple steps to produce it? Is it if there's something that you got to go to here, to here, to here, man, this is multiple. Is the, and if you have employees, and by the way, just because your family is helping you, 
you don't have the right to like get on them, get upset. You know, there's a lot of husband wives that really uh, don't work well together in business and they're forced to a little bit by the nature of it. They're growing together. My wife and I have worked side by side in our business world for our well, I worked for a company for the first 10 years, for 42 years. We've been married 50 years. 40 of those years, we owned a business together. I'd like to tell you we never had an argument, but that would be a lie because we had an argument, but we figured out how to, how, to, how to fix it. We figured out to not get all upset. We figured out, well, we got upset, but we got over getting upset. And I tried to the best of my ability and the best as I on my side to settle it before we went to sleep. I don't want to worry about it the next morning. If I was wrong, I'm wrong. A little marriage counseling here, sorry. Systems, systems, systems. Now, another thing about systems is that they're not just totally for starting. It's for fixing and adjusting your current businesses. Do you see? A broken system need to be addressed as soon as possible. You're creating a problem down line. You cannot you you cannot ignore uh, your failure of your body's systems like your hearts or your lungs or something. You can't ignore that. People do that sometimes, and they need to go check it out. Well, if you have a problem in your production or something you're doing, then you got to go fix it out and change it. And you must examine your system before you blame someone else for the mistakes. Oh, it was his fault. No, to be honest with you, it's your fault. It's your fault every single time because you didn't train them well enough. You didn't hire the right person. If you have a good hiring system, you'll have less problems. If you have a good training system, you'll have less problems. I will tell you in my second business, especially when I had big companies, I had a few big companies buying a lot of stuff for year after year after year. And they would say, here's a problem. And I'd say, okay, let me get to the core of that. Let me help fix that. And I never once said, oh, that was Joe. That was Bill. You know, he's the problem. No, I'm always responsible for sure, because I got to have a system to take care of these things. And the systems will need to be adjusted from time to time. Now, I'm going to use another example. Then we're going to go to questions real quick. The example is someone making a wedding cake. We know about weddings. We know either ours or kids or a friend or something. We need a cake. So what kind of cake? You're the baker. Well, you need to tell the customer through a system, here's the kinds of cakes that we can make for you. Here's some round ones. Here's some rectangular. Here's a square one. Here's a tall one. Here's a short one. And... Here's some that have a chocolate type uh, flavor or a vanilla type flavor. And here's the frosting we can do. And here's the decor we can do. That's a system of explaining what you have to offer. And if they say, well, I want something different, yeah, I'll be open. So, well, give me your ideas and start creating an, another system, another way of doing it. But most of the time, something they prefer, and especially if they want something special, it might cost a little more. If they're willing to pay for it, then go for it. Because your pans are designed for certain sizes. You know, I don't want to make a cake all the time. And it looks a certain way. So now you've got a standard way of, now if you're just making one cake, I'll just remember it in my head. No, it won't work that way. Got to write it down. You don't remember, and you've got to have them acknowledge, hey, this is what I wanted. And, and it's kind of a contract to say, hey, we reviewed this. Now, do you want you want chocolate? You want it square? You want this kind of frosting? And you, want, and you kind of want it look like example A in this picture. Yeah? Okay. I know what you want. Now we can make it. Now you're going to make it. How are you going to make it? Well, you have to have a system to make it. If you want it to taste right, the, oh, by the way, you usually have at a cake, you have not only the look of it, you have a, te a test tasting. You get to test the taste. You don't want a, a, a good looking wedding cake. No bride wants a good looking wedding cake. And they said, man, but it tasted terrible. No, you want something that really tasted good. Wow. And then 
that's what you're creating. You you have now your if you do it right and you should do it right and it's all organized and everybody's happy and the price was what they expected. It wasn't necessarily cheap. It was what they expected. It's what you, they agreed to. Everybody that comes to the wedding, guess what? There's all these young girls are going, whoa, 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 when I get married, I want it like that. Or these young guys, you know how it works. Well, man, can we get that? Well, who did that? I'm I'm the one over here. Here's a business card. Don't forget me, you know? And, and so now, but how do you make it? Oh, you better have the recipe. You better have proven the recipe and don't change it because they can they sampled the flavor at the testing and now it tastes very much like that. Oh, and it looks like this. Okay. I understand. Oh, it looks like that. And it comes to paying the bill or you get, I, by the way, on, on wedding stuff, I would never wait to be paid in full at the end. I would say, okay, here's the deposit. Oh, what do you mean deposit? Well, to get started, I need 50% down. This is a little uh, on the side, but see, everybody's excited at a wedding. There's just like money is rolling out of the uh, pocketbook. Everything, I want this, I want this. And then five days after the wedding, if the bills aren't paid, uh oh, we overspent. I know how it works. So, now you've got part pay, you got it written down, you have a system of collecting the money. And when you deliver the order that at that showing, you take a deposit down, you record it on your system. Thank you. You paid this amount, this portion of it. And then they come in to, to whatever, and you get another portion at least, but then you get paid in full prior to the delivery of the cake. Pretty important, especially in weddings. Okay, we're talking about systems. If you'll give me just a pause, I need to take a quick drink and 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 think about a question. Can you allow me just to pause just for a second? Is that okay, Judith? Yes, good. Okay. Think of a question. I'll be right back. Let's know if you have a question. Maybe you can be putting up your yellow hand. So we know you have a question. I'm sorry, I'm in the dark for some reason. Either I'm in the sun or I'm in the dark, so I don't know. Let me put up your yellow hand. If you have a question, so Gary can easily see. And that will save also on the time. Or if you have a question on systems. Unmute yourself or put up your yellow hand and then he can. Hello. Yes. Yes. First time, Manre. Okay. Wait. Don't ask because I'm not, he's not yet back. So you have a question. Anyone else with a question? Okay. I, I'm back when you are. Okay. Okay. So first time, Manre is the first one. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I've, I've been following on systems in our businesses. Okay. 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 And uh, uh, I see it so, so important for us to implement it in our businesses. But uh, uh, I have a question to ask. Okay. Okay. Sometimes here, here in Africa, systems are a bit different. Okay. Like uh, we are learning business uh, or a hand to mouth, hand to mouth. What you earn is what you spend. What you earn is what you spend. So how do you advise somebody like that one? For example, somebody is doing a small business. He wakes up, he goes for business. He gets profits of like 50, 30,000. And that same 30,000 is the money he's supposed to use to buy soap, uh, food at home and everything. How do you advise such a person? to implement saving because you say it in systems, you must save your time and save your money. Okay. And you say the simpler the system, the more likely it will succeed. So I need some more light on that. And now you can advise some of us. Okay. Good question. So you as a Christian audience have an opportunity right now to influence the future of your nation. I'm mm. telling you, 
You have that opportunity. Yeah, your current culture typically works in this way, and I understand. But let's just learn from God. What does the ant do? In the summertime, when it's plentiful, he gathers and stores. Mm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. who pushed this person into being like the, we are called to be peculiar. We're called to be different, not look different, but do business different. That's why we're doing. I will tell okay. you that this and here's what could be happening, okay? It, it It's going to take a progressive of time, but if if you can start with just putting some reserve aside, just a little reserve, and, and one of the mistakes is that people think they have to grow so much big, big, oh, I'll get bigger, bigger. You, that person, you may have to step back a little bit and get it under control. You may have to get a part-time job someplace else doing something else until you get your business under control. And by under control, you're implementing this new mindset. We didn't, we told you from the very beginning in the introduction, you have to change the way you think. And so if you will start thinking along these lines, don't be too drastic, but making changes. Okay. So tomorrow morning you go out and you gain some income. Put some of it aside, separate, and then the next morning you put some more aside. That's called building a reserve. What this does for you is that at some points you can gain great advantage because if you can get, keep a little reserve, but if you you know if you go buy uh, one sack of beans, I'll just say one sack of beans or one small container of beans. Here is the price. But if you buy a bigger bag, normally you get a much better price. And if you can buy even a bigger bag of reserve, you even get a better price. And besides that, you didn't have to go down to the store wasting time. Oh, I need some more beans today. Every day, I spend a half a day getting the beans that I need to sell that day. You start saving if by efficiencies like way over. And now you're in a position to either make more profit and you got to know your numbers. You got to know what it's really costing you and you're making more profit. And then you're also in ability to know you're making profit. And, and also you, you can, you can uh, uh, work in a way that, that, that profit is working in your, in your favor because you have extra reserve, you have extra ability to buy. And then you have, uh, your, it's, it's, we call it, I know, I know you're not used to snow there, okay? But we call in our world a snowball effect. So it, it, just imagine that you have snow, <laughs> it's hard to imagine probably, on a hill and you start a ball at the top and it starts rolling down, it rolls down and gets bigger and bigger and bigger. When you get onto systems and you start using the systems effectively, you will see results. Don't forget, you're also lining up your business more in accordance with God and his way of doing business. So just in the very natural, a non-Christian, an atheist, a Muslim, if they use systems, and sometimes they're better than Christians, they know how the laws work. But then you have the added value of having God to help you. I know it's a, a step, and it's such a great question, and I hope you understand that I'm sympathetic to that, but now's the time to be different slowly, step by step. And over time, people are going, wow, how did you get ahead so well? I use God's laws for systems, and that's one of the keys. Okay? Yes, please. Yes. I've understood. Okay. I want to hear a report yes. back, I hope, next week. It's, it's not going to change yeah. overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. Don't don't think that way. Yeah. Kids grow up now. Slowly. <laughs> another question I had. Excuse me, I'm sorry to to interrupt, but uh, uh, there is another another challenge that we are facing, and we need more light or clarification on this. Eh? 
uh, we, uh, most of the pastors and leaders in, uh, in our country are learning businesses, but in losses. You find somebody learning a business three years. Like you start a business and you learn like three years in losses. For example, you have a school and every end of term you end up in debts, in debts, in debts. Okay? Like you, uh, so, so sometimes you, you, you encourage yourself and say, since I'm just beginning, it will get well in the future. So this is affecting most of the business people in Uganda. We start a business with some little capital and we keep on moving in, in losses. Every, every year we end in debts, in, in debts. No profits are realized. How do you advise such a person kindly? Well, again, I'm aware of this, and here's what seems to be the pattern. And again, we're here to change that. So we wait till we get a large sum of money in order to start. Okay. Now, the large sum is relative. Whatever large is doesn't matter. It's just a larger sum of money. And so now I can start my business. I haven't done any experimenting. I haven't done the testing. I probably have just looked at my some competition. I'll say, I'll match their price. Oh, no, no, I'll get better. I'll, I'll sell it better than that price. I, you can come to me because my price is cheaper. And without okay. record keeping, you're losing money every time you make a sale. And you got to pay yourself. If you're working there 40, 50 hours a week, who's going to pay the bills at home? Okay. So you have to pay yourself in this whole thing. And so <laughs> you can get the bigger, the bigger the loan you can get, the longer you can stay in business until you've given all your money away and you close the business bankrupt. Now, is that wow. not crazy? <laughs> so wow. I'm just telling you that there is a better way. And then we, then we actually ask God to help us. We're like, True. we're on the wrong pathway. We're like, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I know you've gone to better. Okay. So rather than on the way to Umbarara, you think you're going to Umbarara and you're actually going to Jinja because you got on the wrong road. And then somewhere True. down the road, you said, dad, come on, I'm on the wrong road. And he said, God, why am I on the wrong road? Don't blame God at that point. You're on the wrong road. You chose the wrong road. You didn't check it out. We're here to <laughs> change the way you think. True. True. And I'm telling you, the light of this is probably for evangelism. You know, we have an evangelistic crusade, and I'm not making fun. I'm not making fun. We have a great preacher. Man, he preached the word of God. That's good. We have hands raised up. Praise God. How many of those are we going to have without really changing the nation? I, I'm not against it, but slowly, steady, you start changing your financial situation and they will flock to you asking you, how do you do? Well, I tie, I, I'm going to get you connected with God. We're finding that our teachings on finances are actually a very solid, not immediate, salvation and, and and evangelistic tool but that's 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 not our sideline it's it's your job to reach your own nation not my job it's your job it's your job to reach your own nation as christian and i've said over and over there's enough money in every country to reach that nation for christ if we would do business better and you're not really blessed until you're reaching out of your country to the nations next door. That's I, I'm not elevating America, but that's really who we are. And why we're blessed. Now everybody wants to come here or tap into this. I, I'm on a bandwagon, but I really want to see this change with you. Okay. Great insight. It's a great, great teaching. Thank you. I've learned something. <laughs> I, what I could suggest is, it, it, I know enough about strawberries or plants or something. To have a good fruit, sometimes you have to prune 
the the other fruit off the vine. You know what true, I mean? True. Okay. So yeah. again, God's way, prune back, scale back a little bit, scale back. No, you know, you know, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, scale back, prune off, and get more organized. Not just organized. To go down the checklist and say, "Hey, is my quality good? Am I developing a customer? Does a customer come back? That's customer service. Do I have my record keeping? Yeah, I, no, I don't have it. Well, then get scale back a little bit. Don't chase money. See this? We call it hand to mouth. From hand to mouth, morning to evening, out trying to trying to make the living. I I I I don't believe God's. He will. He will. His mercy will see us through." all of us, myself included, a lot of mistakes. His mercy will take us along the line. Unfortunately, when his mercy shows up, some people say, well, that's the way you do. Hold it. That's not the way you do. His mercy took over. Amen. Okay. Hope I'm not too hard here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. It has been powerful. Yes. Yeah. Another question? <laughs> Please don't let me scare you away. <laughs> I have a question, if that's okay. Of course. So um, throughout this process, I'm kind of launching a new business, or it's more a service base. Okay. So since it's not something that I've done, or I know how to do, is there a way to try to beat the learning curve with systems? Or is it as you go along and you stumble and you say, hey, that should be a system in the future? Since I don't have a lot of knowledge on it, is there a way to try to prevent some of the stumbling? That is an excellent question. And you're right on track. There's a bit of both. So here's the things. I'm just going back to uh, my transport of furniture okay um so when you pick something that's made a design to set like in your house and you have like a, a, a like a desk and that desk is designed to stay in your house it's really not designed to be moved so how do i do how do i do well i already knew you just pick it up and move it but along the way I learned things that I had to always be changing and changing. So the smaller you can start, and I re-emphasize that don't feel like you're lesser of a person if you take a side income from someplace else. But now in your nations, that's probably hard to do. So I'm, I, I realize that, but be willing to uh, do something that would just sustain income to your house and why you're getting your business in order and then prune back, start as small as you can. And then yes, everything that you come across should be a lesson that you learn. So in my case, I learned how to protect the furniture. I learned how to stack the furniture. I learned that you don't ever put glass horizontal. You must always put it vertical. You must carry it vertical because what happened? We had an accident. So there's, there's, you know, each, each thing, the cake, the, the wedding cake, rather than start with wedding cakes, start with a birthday cake, start with a birthday cake to the neighbor's child that's having a birthday and make one small cake. I, well, hold it. I want a business that's going to sustain me. That comes if you build a foundation. But to borrow money, go down that path, and come in bankruptcy is not a good testimony to you, your children, or God, or anybody in the area. So build a strong foundation. As far as, you know, I, I just reemphasize that the totality of God's laws for business is designed to try to help you with your question. How do you how do you put this in process? I started with a half piece of paper. That's all I started with, with my pencil and a and a and a and a straight edge. That's all I started with for my record keeping. That was it. 
I started with just, I didn't even, I didn't even, there's certain equipment that you could use to help move a refrigerator. It's called a refrigerator dolly. I moved 30, 40 people without even a refrigerator dolly because me and another guy could handle it without it because this is just temporary. I don't need to waste $40 for a dolly. I'll just do what I have. I'm I live this. And so everything you're saying about learning as you go is true. And you want to grow so from step to step so that the, the challenges you have are within your reach to overcome. And maybe no one even knows about it, but you, you understand? You don't have to broadcast your mistakes just between you and your, your spouse and God or whatever, and fix that mistake. Just don't do it again. One of the best ways, I've just said this way, sometimes you can view it this way. I've tried it so many ways and it didn't work. The only last thing I tried, it finally worked. <laughs> but don't give up if you're on the right path, okay? A nice quiz in a quick question, Gary, before oh, yeah. we you know, You're saying, okay, try, do not give up. But at what point after you've, like invested in a business do you expect like profits or oh, no okay this is working or this this is not working at what point do you say okay i've put in enough or in a business or do you expect to get profit like right away do you have like a life a time span for right. a business? you may be surprised okay mm -hmm. i expect profit in the very first week week wow. because i know what it costs me to do i know what i charge the customer and so i know i have a small piece of profit for that one job there's a whole teaching i'd like to do on called job costing to do one job not even call it business you should know whether you're making profit we are my wife and i work last night on something that we make using uh, uh, an herb that we bought and we calculate up what's all the ingredients in there so in real business here's what i do when i had the big business i always had all the numbers all the income and all the expenses and i had people working in these departments accounting and i needed it at the end of the month i said get all of the bills recorded all the income recorded within 10 days. So I know what the numbers are. I know what the numbers are. And then I say, do I make profit or do I not make profit? 10 days after the end of the month, I always knew whether I made profit that previous month. And if I had, because things would go like this, kind of up and down a little bit. Oh, well, I didn't make profit. I didn't like, oh, freak out. No, I would go another month. And then I would say, oh, did I make profit or not make for that month? Oh, I lost again. And then I bring my staff in. I said, folks, my staff, my people, all my work, not all my workers, my key people. I said, just so you know, we've had two months where we did not make profit. Now, we have to make profit on the third month, a pretty good profit or I'm going to have to make some adjustments. I didn't threaten them. I'm going to fire them. No, but we have to go through and cut expenses. We have to do something significant to cut expenses. That's usually with systems and things we're doing. We have to, we're changing something because I'm not going. And so what I would do is I call it rolling. I would have my profit for month one, my profit or loss for month two, and profit or loss for month three. I hope I'm not losing you. Then I'd look at those together. If I add them all together for three months, did I make up average profit when I added a three months together? Then at the end of the next month, I rolled off the oldest month and added the new. I always knew if I was making profit. You should always know. You should know. But if you have record keeping and then you make adjustments, here's the, here's the example. You're going down the pathway and you're going on the road, but you're drifting off of the lane that you're in. 
you're not in the ditch, but you're getting closer to the ditch. So do I just keep going, getting closer and closer and closer to the ditch till I'm in the ditch? Or do I make a minor adjustment? That's why it's critical. You make minor adjustments to get back in the center of your lane on the road. So you make minor adjustments to get back on. But you, sometimes you have to make tough adjustments. Depends on how far off the road you are. You know, there's been times where I wasn't doing things right, and I jerked. I jerked my car back into the lane. Uh-oh, that I'm not going to do again. I don't want to jerk my car because I was about in the ditch. That's where you want to head. I know it's difficult to conceive, but I'm telling you like it is. I'm not here what we call sugar-coated. it. Oh, everything's going to be fine if you just pray a little bit and ask God. Yeah, keep praying. Keep reading the Word. Keep in there, but make some business decisions. Still like me? Still friends? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's helpful. That makes sense. It, though it, I'm thinking ours is a service uh, business where you have to first like rent an office, like set up the business. Do you count yeah. that as part of the expenses? And then before we even get clients or do we wait until we get clients and start offsetting the expenses? The, that's a very good question. So some people have the thought that several things to say, man, I'm really in business if I employ a person, or I'm really in business if I employ a lot of people, or I'm really in business if I have a rental outside my house, or I'm really in business of whatever. Well, what's really in business if you're making profit? That's really it. Now, you're serving God, so I'm talking from a natural standpoint. And so I would strongly recommend delaying any extra expense called overhead until you absolutely have to have it. Let me give you my story, okay? I had pictures for almost two years. I had my entire transport company operating out of my house. I had a place that I could park my trucks and my workers came to the my what we call a garage. And that's where I had my boxes, where we sold boxes for packing. And when when I when I paid them, I would either come into my kitchen and give them a paycheck. Man, I was resistant, resistant upon adding extra expenses until I already had a proven track record of the ability to pay that rent. I held off and held off. And then what happened? One person calls and says, listen, I wish you had storage. I said, oh, well, I can, I can find storage. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll write you a contract. And he wrote me a contract to, to, bought, to, to take pay me revenue for my, when my case, storage space, far in excess of the rental of the storage of, of the new office. In other words, you don't just rent the place. You have to have utilities. You have to have uh, internet, you know, whatever you're going to have. And you've got now got to travel there back and forth, depends on where it is. You're adding a lot of expense when you go outside of the house. So each, each business can be different, but I would be very careful, very careful very slow, really slow to add overhead of an external rent for anything or external anything. Every expense is like you're guarding your, your money. You're guarding the commitment and especially commitments that go on and on and on. I would be more likely to buy something that was a one-time purchase that would make things more efficient, way more. Because I can say, when I buy that, that's going to save time and money and energy. So I'll buy it one time. But to put that on payments or or lock into a, a one-year lease or commitment, 
Oh, be careful. Grow the law of growing step by step by step is really one of those critical laws on that subject. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying the thought pattern. What is the thought pattern? We're changing the whole essence is change the way you think. Change the way you think. Getting your, getting your, I'm I know it's not my favorite subject, but record keeping is a really, really, really important of, of a business, a real important step of a business. Really important. We're here, we're here to help you. Don't, don't think I'm being hard and scolding in no way, but I'm also have no reason to just tell you what you want to hear. No, that, that's very helpful. That's very helpful. Because again, if you don't take care of overhead, there's it's even instant your profits. Well, what your, when you rent something like that, I'm in the rental business. Okay, that's really what I do. I rent space. So there, I mean, that's, it's when people, I'm very careful who I rent to, but when they're out baking the cake, doing the service, they're paying me for that space. Honestly, they're working a lot harder than I am. I'm providing a space for them to pay me for the, using that space. There's nothing wrong with either one, but uh, I, you know, I, I really, I, I wanted to buy something as early as I could, so I'm not paying rent. That's another subject. Okay, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. That helps. Yeah, so we are at the top of the hour, Gary. I don't know if can I, can I make one more example about systems? Okay. Yes. Oh, wait. We we say step does stepping on toes make sense? We when you you don't want to step on someone's toes, okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Does that does everybody understand? No, that? you don't want to offend someone. Okay. So I don't know any of you. I've never been in anybody's house. I don't know your families or anything. But a good test of whether you're using systems is how organized is your own house right now? And especially if you have children. So you can be the mama that picks up after everybody and they just put their shoes anywhere they want and you do all the sweeping and you, 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 they all go to bed and now you have two hours to clean up the house. Or you can put systems in place in your house. The great lesson. I'm not perfect, but I was at my daughter's house. It's not spick and span. I'm not saying that. But they initiated the system in their house that if you got your clothes dirty, then we'll show you how to wash your own clothes. That's their system. And so here's where you can put your clothes Here's where you can put this, and, and I know in some, and I, I know that not everybody maybe has dish uh, clothes washing machines. So please forgive me uh, if I'm, it's not that difficult, but, but however you clean your clothes, you can teach your kids how to be clean. You can teach your kids where things go. You can teach your family how to be organized. And rather than be the mama that's picking up and cleaning everything and, and, and doing, hey, put systems in place in your house for basic routine things. Who's going who's gonna to vacuum the floor today? It's your, your child. Maybe they don't do it as good as you do. So what? They're learning. And, you know, when they get married, their spouse will appreciate that you grew them up. Was that a little bonus for nothing? Mm, that helps, especially for mothers. <laughs> what if they don't listen? What if you keep repeating yourself? Do you say no? Oh, yeah. There, now you got to create the system. You got to have some kind of a, a gentle reward or some kind of gentle, hey, I'm not doing it. Or whatever. You know, you the, here, raising a family is a 
close to managing a business, okay? And every once in a while, I had somebody, and this is not a bad thing. If somebody's single, don't don't be, don't think. But this person had very little tolerance, meaning they were expecting everything to be the same. And this gentleman, it was a man, and he's like in his forties, and he'd never been married. And I said, Myron, Myron, all of us that got married had to figure out how to work together in a different way. So I need you to be more tolerant of your coworkers in this areas because we we have you can't be mean to us because we don't do it exactly like you want it done. Got it? <laughs> okay. Are we having fun still? Yeah, that was very helpful. We, okay. We have we, we have to go, but people can send their questions to the chat. I yes. think you'll, you'll be willing to look at them. Okay, I'll, I will. And do those chats go away then after a while? How can I keep them? Uh, we try to keep the groups. People, We don't allow people to post, but the information is there. Okay, okay, good. Yeah. So okay. It will be there. So if I see any question on the chat, I can remind you. Yeah. Yeah. But if you didn't have a chance to share, please put your question for Gary on the chat and then he can answer he can answer you from there. Thank you so okay, much. No, Gary. I'm not sure I'm no, I'm I'm willing, but I'm not sure how that's gonna work. So will yeah. the chat will the chat box go away in a little bit? I, in other words, in just a few minutes I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave the house for my other yeah. appointments. No, it will be there until next week. So okay. if anyone puts a question, okay, okay, anytime I'm during the week, help. okay, yes, and maybe, that's yeah, okay, okay. And you can record a, a voice for him too, if you don't yeah, want to. Record. Yeah, that's good. Let me pray out. Lord, thank you for this group. Thank you that you bless them, guide them, lead them, give them strength to represent you as godly men and women of God. Thank you for the light that you've given all of us. We give you alone, you alone all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Okay. Thank Bye -bye you now. so much.